Hey friend, welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll be delving into how to master for vinyl. We'll be looking into the types of processing you should avoid when mastering for vinyl and some of the ways you can make your vinyl master sound better. So stick around for the full video, but first, if this is a topic that you find interesting, I'd highly recommend looking into the blog post that's associated with this video. In it, you'll find a lot more information on this topic, so simply scroll down to the description box below for a link. Also, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master that mix for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you have to do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. So, I'm going to share with you eight different forms of processing that will probably occur when mastering for a vinyl record. Now, this isn't a step-by-step -step instruction on how to master, but some things to keep in mind and to combine with your current mastering signal chain. So the first is to use a mid-side equalizer to attenuate the side image up to 150 hertz. Now, although there is some debate as to how much a vinyl record can handle low frequencies in a stereo format, creating a mono image for the low end is pretty widely supported. Doing so means keeping a focused stereo image in which the bass, the kick, and other low end instrumentation is kept mono. Now the easiest way to attenuate the mid-channel frequencies and subsequently keep the low end mono is by using a mid-side equalizer. When doing so, create a high pass filter on the side channel and cut out up to 150 hertz, but no lower than about 130 hertz, while keeping a 12 dB to 24 dB per octave slope. Now number two is using the same equalizer you can subtly attenuate sibilance based frequencies. So sibilance based frequencies typically occur between 3 kHz to 10 kHz, but uh, it'll definitely depend on the content that's in the song. Now attenuating these frequencies is important to avoid distortion on a record. Essentially, when a lathe is cutting into a lacquer plate or to the master copy that's going to be used for further vinyl cutting, excessively high frequencies can cause distortion by maxing out that needle's ability to move back and forth when cutting. So to accomplish this attenuation, you can just use an equalizer or a multiband compressor, whatever works for you. Number three, you can use compression to control any excessive dynamics. When mastering for vinyl, controlling dynamics takes on a different and wholly unique purpose. If a master used for cutting a lacquer is too dynamic, then the greater amplitude will cause a significant cut into the vinyl. The significant cut can cause consumer grade needles to jump out of place and uh, can cause what is often referred to as a skipping record. With that said, greater amounts of compression or dynamic control may be needed to adequately prepare a master for the vinyl cutting process. At number four, we have gently introducing low level compression. Now this step may be a little less obvious, but it's important nonetheless. Because we're avoiding limiting or significant limiting when mastering for vinyl, this means that the quieter aspects of a recording will not be amplified to roughly the same level as the formerly loudest aspects of that master. Now, as a result, the quieter aspects of the recording will remain somewhat imperceivable and may be lost on the listener. Now, fortunately, low-level compression can be used to augment these aspects and make them even more perceivable to the listener. Now, this is a great way to add some depth to a master, and considering that excessive limiting cannot be used when mastering for vinyl, Low-level compression is a great alternative. At number five, you should avoid significant psychoacoustic stereo imaging. Now, psychoacoustic stereo imaging can sound great when implemented on a digital master. However, the physical limitations of a vinyl record may not permit an excessively wide stereo image. Now, since certain stereo widths cannot be supported, any information that exceeds the physical limitations of a record will be attenuated and lost. Now, with that in mind, it is best not to use psychoacoustic effects that cause an excessively wide stereo image when mastering for vinyl. Number six is avoid unnecessary harmonic generation or distortion. Now, typically speaking, harmonic generation is a great way to add complexity to a master. It fills the gaps of the frequency spectrum and makes the fundamentals from which they originate more easily perceived. But when mastering for vinyl, any distortion present in the master will be exacerbated by the vinyl cutting and reproduction process. This means that harmonic generation needs to be introduced mildly, otherwise the harmonics may become too present and potentially unpleasant to the listener. The same goes for any other form of distortion. Because the cutting process introduces its own forms of distortion, introducing phase distortion, harmonic distortion, and general noise, Adding other forms of distortion during the mastering process may result in an unwanted level of distortion. Number seven, avoid excessive limiting and gain reduction. 
In a traditional mastering scenario, significant limiting and gain reduction causes negative effects for the fidelity and enjoyability of the master. This is equally true when mastering for vinyl. Now, similar to other forms of distortion previously mentioned, any clipping distortion present in a master will be exacerbated during the vinyl cutting process. As a result, limiting and significant truncation of a signal during mastering should be avoided if excessive distortion is to be avoided during record playback. Lastly, at number eight, sequence the tracks to avoid excessive sibilance towards the record center. Now, one of the most notable and perhaps more interesting effects of the vinyl's technical limitations is how the shape of the vinyl record causes higher frequencies to be attenuated the closer the needle gets towards the center. In short, the record spins at a constant rate. Now, this means that the needle is traveling at the same speed. However, the distance the needle is traveling is constantly changing. Now, this is due to the groove in which the needle is placed, becoming smaller and smaller the closer it gets to the center of the record. As a result, the velocity of the needle decreases, and the higher frequencies are no longer able to be replicated by the needle. Now, all this to say that tracks with an amplified high frequency range will not be accurately represented if they're sequenced towards the middle of a record. With that said, some planning needs to go into determining which tracks will be best suited for the center of a record. If you implement all these steps, or at least keep them in mind when mastering, your mastering will be much better suited for vinyl production and distribution. But what do you think? Has this video been helpful? If so, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, again, definitely check out the blog post where you can find even more information on how to master for vinyl. Follow the link in the description below to find that. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. All you have to do is set up the short account, upload the song, and we will do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. That way you stay up to date on all of our latest releases. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video or a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.